for a bit of programming. Uh, so I had this, um, I had this idea that I couldn't quite get out of my head. So instead of working on um, my CAD library today, I actually wanted to prototype this out just to kind of get it out of my brain into some code, into some uh, documentation. Because it might be uh, kind of a fun little trick, if you will. And uh, it's an idea, just a small little idea around gamifying part of my uh, time tracking um, and time management approach. Uh, it's, it's a strange year, I think, for a lot of people in general, 2020. But um, I've noticed in particular that I've got a few issues that have cropped up related to using my time in ways that I actually find, um, call it fulfilling. Um, so I've been thinking about that a lot lately. I mean, I've been trying to balance giving myself, you know, the a mental break because of how, you know, weird life circumstances are in general right now and um, stuff like that. But, it, you know, there, there's some maybe interesting sort of challenge challenges around this and potential kind of out of the box solutions. So it's... It's just an idea, but it's, I think, kind of fun to hypothesize an idea and prototype out a potential thing that could work in kind of a fun way. So really what it boils down to is this for me is it's so easy to get distracted by scrolling on social media. It's really easy to go on YouTube and watch videos for longer than you want, that kind of stuff. And the mental reward of doing that is comedy or you get to see cool stuff and it's really really easy to do and it feels boredom you know if you feel bored you can almost instantaneously fill that boredom gap so over time what happens is instead of wanting to read a book wanting to study this cool concept wanting to learn more in depth about programming or what have you or uh, visiting my uh, music again um, I used to play guitar, but I haven't in a while, that kind of thing. Instead of doing all of those things that I know are fulfilling, it's just way easier to go and watch a video uh, and laugh, and sometimes not even laugh, just kind of zone out. So, it, my idea is, or is sort of more a question about how can I kind of cheat myself into feeling instantly rewarded for uh, those types of activities that don't have quote-unquote instant reward kind of built into them. And uh, so I've just been thinking, I love the game Minecraft, as a lot of people do. I play it uh, fairly regularly. I like playing in survival mode. And the whole idea is just this, is I want to, I already do time tracking with my phone. Oh, speaking of, I actually do have to start a timer. Funny. I always forget to start the timers. It's not about being perfectly accurate, it's about getting a general sense of how I use my time. Anyway, the idea is to combine the idea of time tracking with the sort of fun reward loop of getting certain items in the game Minecraft in this case. So I'm gonna uh, not jibber jabber anymore, I'm gonna just start uh, a new program file here. I I always have Clojure open up here, the, just the home page. I'm going to use Clojure for this. It's just prototyping anyway, so it's kind of, you know, it might be cool if this idea works out. It might be a cool exercise to build out the utility in uh, using other languages. But for, for the prototype, I'm going to grab a language that I happen to know reasonably well, which is Clojure. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start a file, and then I'll explain in a little more detail kind of what I... Uh, uh, what I'm getting at, so the thrust of what I want to do. Okay, so um, we're gonna call it diamond carrot because that's kind of funny. Okay, so um, let's actually just because I'm a little lazy here. I am going to actually go like this and copy 
this opening thing here. Okay, so there we go. We can subtitle um, there, something like that. Let's let's check out the depths here. Um, I don't. I won't need all of these at all. We'll keep hiccup just because it's kind of potentially useful. Keep spec and test just in case, and keep closure script. That's. I'd say I'd call that reasonable. There we go, and I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't need that for this uh, little project. Um, utilities, oops. Build. Um, I'll get rid of these, I don't, again, just a rough prototype, so all those methods I can use for other things. Oh. Sometimes you get weird display. There we go. Okay, so depths.eden, save that. Create the directory. Let's now go check that the directory exists. Uh, diamond carrot list. There's depths eden and then there's the org file that I've got open there. So let's uh, no, let's not do that. Let's go here. There we go. Perfect. So now that we have the depths Eden file, it's really easy to um, spawn a REPL. Should be easy anyway. And so we can use a REPL to nicely prototype out some different ideas. So, uh, once the REPL spawned in, I'll write some notes in the file here about what I'm, what the idea even is, and we can go from there. So uh, let's go here. Idea. Um, this is a silly idea uh, about combining time tracking slash management efforts with a bit of. Um, dopamine generating with a bit of uh, dopamine I, I mean, I'll get into that with a bit of fun by using my pre-existing love of Minecraft um, the basic premise is real life time spent doing um, activities which align with my values uh, will result in a semi-random uh, reward from a from a uh, rewards table the basic premise is Geez, pressing all the wrong buttons here. There we go. I can tune the um, I can tune the calculations done. How do I how do I word this? Um, I can tune the over time uh, real world hours uh, will allow me to um, mine in the game for resources that are otherwise tough or tedious to get uh, through vanilla uh, through game mechanics. 
Hey Biz, uh, it's going well with me. How are you? I hope you're. I I, I hope you're doing well. Um, I am totally ignoring working on my library for the day. I had this little weird idea and I wanted to kind of prototype it out a little bit. So if, if you're tuning in and wondering what's going on, it's something totally different. But uh, anyway, hope you're doing well. Trying to get through quarantine. Oh man, you know, aren't we all? Things a little tough for you lately? If that's the case, I'm uh, I'm sorry to hear it. It's a uh, it's a weird time to be alive, to to say the least about it. <laughs> hope you're hope you're managing okay though. Literally, you've been in the house for thirteen days. Are you um? Are you quarantining yourself out of precaution, out of travel necessities, that sort of thing? Like, are you, are you, oh, okay, so this, I, here's what I think is happening. You went, I do believe it was Florida, you visited family or something like that. Then on your return, you're now required to, for two weeks, quarantine yourself. Is that what's going on? I think I think that's kind of the roughly speaking the uh, chain of events here. Live in Miami, travel to Canada. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I've got it flipped over in my mind. I thought it was that you lived in Canada but traveled to Miami. Anyway, point is uh, that that doesn't matter all that much. It just don't go too crazy, man. <laughs> Thirteen days. Yeesh, you're almost there. Almost there. Assuming it's two weeks. Postal? Are you going crazy? <laughs> Maybe crazy is not the right word to use. You're getting, uh, getting a little, uh, what's it, what do people call it? Uh, cabin fever, right? <laughs> A little bit of cabin fever. Post office workers that go nuts. <laughs> well, man, I think uh, I think you can pull through and manage it. But uh, my sympathy to you. Soon I'm gonna be traveling as well. Uh, well, soonish. Yeah, it's in about. Two and a half weeks or so. Is that unfamiliar to me? Yeah, I don't quite know what you're. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referencing. Oh, so going postal, I've heard as a slang term, but I actually don't know the um, etymology of it. I do know it has some sort of negative connotations, right? Going postal. Hmm. So I so here I knew about the phrase going postal, but I had no idea that it derived from a real life set of events. Huh. Yikes, that's not good. Yeah, so 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 I've heard oh man, he's going postal or whatever before, but uh, there's even like some g old games that have that and stuff like that. Eesh. Well, hang in there. Hopefully that uh, hopefully you're not part of that story. That wouldn't be so good. That would be uh, a little unfortunate, I think. There. NBA jams is it like a, a a power up or whatever in that game? I'm sure. I'm sure there's like kind of these like. Uh, crappy indie games called Postal and Going Postal and stuff like that. They use the term there. Yeah. When the player's getting hot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know how to how to feel exactly about slang that derives from such real um, real world violent scenarios like that. It's a little it's it's a little weird. I mean, I'm not saying don't use those terms. I'm just saying it's like, man, we're we all have this collective fascination with with violence. I guess I, I don't know. I don't need to get too philosophical over it. History numbs. Yeah, that's true enough. You know, it's. Like, like case in point, I know, I know of the slang phrase "going postal," but I didn't know, I didn't know the where it derived from in reality, right? Yeah, yeah, cartoons are violent. Look, I'm not, I'm not saying, hey, violence, horrible. We're all, I'm not trying to get philosophical about it. It's just a, it was just a casual observation, I guess, on my part. Anyway, you've got what, like one, one full day of quarantine yet, and then you're, you're kind of in a more free to go scenario I think I think you can I think you can hold out till then <laughs> I hope so <laughs> uh, let's see here um, so the idea I've got is this silly little I have this silly little idea for sort of um, gamifying uh, some of my time management with Minecraft. I like the game Minecraft, um, and I'm I'm just prototyping out this little sort of thing that sort of randomly rewards my like if I spent the day doing productive work for X number of hours or minutes or whatever that can correlate to certain um, item rewards in the in the game or something like that that's that's the idea I have no idea if it's actually gonna help me you know shift priorities to be more productive during um, 2020 but uh, it seems like a fun enough idea to kind of sketch something out so so the next thing here is um, how do I, uh, the idea, the um, implementation, first pass implementation will, um, will uh, take in a CSV file from from time management, uh, time not management, um, time tracking software, uh, and output to the terminal a string which can, which is a valid um, Minecraft console command. This command will, um, when executed in the game, will reward the player with um, items based on based on the real world times according to some reasonable conversion yeah um, Yeah, so it's the idea is basically I'm gonna dump a CSV into the spot here, and then um, run the little program. It reads the CSV and it gives the reward for the day. That's the first prototype. I'll leave it at that for now, and. Um, We'll see what happens from there. Man, this is so silly, but I think it's, I'm kind of excited to see if I can even, like if this will actually be useful to me or if it's just kind of ridiculous. So let me go with um, CSV, um, the time tracker uses um, or has a CSV export function which can be used to 
dump data. Um, rewards equals achievements. Well, so actually not quite. So uh, what I'm thinking is a little bit different. Um, so I don't know how familiar you are familiar you are with Minecraft, like if you play it or not. I've been playing it, you know, lately, uh, you know, on the weekends and on some downtime. And I, I just enjoy playing it in general. Um, but getting, so like you can, you can mine for diamonds in the game and they're somewhat rare. So they can take a little while to actually get just through in-game mechanics. So the idea is not that doing real world stuff gets me achievements in the game. It's just that doing real world stuff can result in an equivalent uh, mining in the game is the idea I've got. So for example, if I do, let's say, two hours of uh, study time, uh, can result in anywhere, um, for example, uh, wait, I'm writing this in the wrong spot. Let's do it like this. Example, two hours of study time can result in anywhere from, uh, so I don't know, 10 to 20 diamonds given uh, into the player's inventory. Two hours of um, dead time, Instagram, Needless, YouTube, etc. cetera, uh, can cost anywhere from 10. 20 diamonds. The idea here is that uh, I can, oh, um, yeah, so that, that's kind of the whole idea. Just this, like, there, like, it, it's all, it, it's all just for fun, right? Like, you can, you can, obviously, you can go into Minecraft and just write these commands anyway, right? There, you don't, you don't need to do anything in the real world to be able to do anything in a game, right? But it's just like you could, so if you have, I have an Apple Watch and I track my runs, I could cheat the total kilometers counter, right? I could turn the run on and drive my car for five kilometers and the app tracking it wouldn't really know if I've actually run or if I've just had my uh, watch on and I wasn't running. So cheating is trivial, but the entire purpose of these sorts of systems is only valuable if you don't cheat. And the only one who really suffers if you do cheat is yourself. So the act of cheating in a self-sustained system like this is entirely defeating of the system altogether, which means it's not uh, a big deal. You got booted? You're back now? Well, I'm not sure what you've missed. I was explaining my idea a little bit about um, Uh, about um, you, so you asked rewards equals achievements. I was just saying not quite. So rewards, I mean in a very loose sense. So for example here, two hours of real world study time could potentially result in anywhere from 10 to 20 diamonds being, oh, you missed about a minute, okay. Uh, you, you know, you could miss, or uh, you could get anywhere from whatever, 10 to 20 diamonds. And the, the whole idea here is there's an element of randomness anyway. So it's not like, oh, so it's not like my brain gets used to, oh, if I study for two hours, I will for sure have this many things. And then it becomes almost like I could cheat, like I could cheat meta wise. The, the whole idea here is I like playing the game and I like it when I get diamonds. So can I use that fact to 
reward myself for doing hard things in real life. <laughs> uh, it's totally independent of any game achievement systems. That's that's beyond the scope of what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm just for myself making a dumb little uh, Pavlovian sort of hey uh, hey Adam, you know if you do this you get this kind of thing. <laughs> Treating part of my brain like a little child, you know? <laughs> but it's fun. Uh, or potentially it's fun. So it's fun to at least prototype these ideas out and see if anything useful comes out of it, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and make... Um, oop, my bad. Let's start with the uh, namespace of this thing. Begin source, closure, tangle, uh, source, diamond caret, core.cljc. Uh, Save that, see if it works. How do you domain model that enclosure or you don't model it at all? I mean, this is just a little prototype idea. I'm not, I'm not doing any crazy modeling or anything. Here, here's what I know is I have a time tracking thing on my phone. I know it can export CSV files. The whole idea is I export the CSV file. I open the CSV file in this little program and I just use the program to sort of, ba basically it just is a random number generator. It randomly generates numbers, pulls from some loot table is the idea, and spits out a valid console command that I copy paste into the game. That's the first idea there. So if you call that a domain model, I don't, I don't know that I would go that far. It's a very, very simple idea. Uh, so I'm just kind of mashing things together, if, if you will. It's not. It's not about making a, a thoroughly robust solution here. It's just. This is just basically me doodling on a napkin. You know. You know what I mean. And then from there, if it's a fun idea that actually works in real life, then I can add refine. I can refine it. I can do who knows what if I find it necessary. But I'm starting real small. Let's see here, load file, source, diamond caret, core at CLJC, yeah. Did it work? No such file. No such file. Oh, huh. I thought um, I thought that that wouldn't matter. Maybe uh, let's try this. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, right. I didn't. Uh, so I loaded the file, but I didn't switch into the namespace. Now if I do this, there we go. Good. So I, in general, uh, Bismonger, I it, that you ask about domain modeling is is totally fine. But there are times where I think some of the ideas and things I have for little code I want to write it probably is way overkill to do crazy modeling ideas. And I think that's fair in some cases, right? Don't get me wrong, I think domain modeling is critical, but I, like, you know, I'm making a tiny little idea for myself. I really think if I know what I'm trying to achieve, that's reasonable to say that's sufficient for going ahead and writing some stuff. At least that's the justification I've got in my mind. 
I think it's fair. Not everything needs to be crazy complicated, right? Uh, or or how how do you say like like a, a full on domain model could could very easily be overkill in some cases. I guess that's all I'm really saying. Uh, okay, so um, oh right now I want to split this. That's the namespace there. Cut that. Hey, oop, shoot. There we go. Let's see here if I now do. There is, um, I think there might be, yeah, closure.data.csv. I wonder if that's, uh, CSV as CSV. Is that valid? Is that going to work? No. Okay, well, let's see here. See if this elucidates. Oh, yeah, I have to make it a dependency uh, in. Or I have to um, put it in, uh, in my depths file here. Uh, okay, let's do data.csv maven version is oh uh, 1.0.0 okay How do I, and I forget, uh, cider reload session. How do you do that? Because uh, usually I often just restart it entirely manually, but that's kind of a pain, so. Um, Sessman restart. Okay, let's try this shortcut. I wonder if it's the default. C S R. Nope, that's uh, something different. Oh boy, let's quit this, please. Okay. Date time. Let's just get out of there. I don't need that. Um, There we go. I have to do it in the right uh, in the right window. <laughs> That's my bad. Error. Error building class path. Closure data. Did I typo something here? Yes, I did. Save that. Wonder if this will actually work or if I goofed it up. Hmm. Well, let's. No, don't exit Emacs. K, let's kill that. Kill that. Close that. And let's just start the REPL over. It should be fine now. That was just a mess up on my part, not any real, not any actual issue with the REPL itself. 
Uh, that was just my own foolishness. Okay, load file. Oh, let's, oh yeah, that's, that's good there. If I load file, source diamond carrot, uh, core.clgc. Hi, yep, that's coming from here. And if I just do namespace, there we go. If I, yeah. Now if I do CSV, yeah, good. Good, good. Okay, so let me go ahead and do, let's make um, fake data for a minute. I know it happens to be Uh, let's see. I, I looked this up briefly. Begin source CSV. I wonder if that's valid. We'll see in a minute. Tangle. Let's just tangle it into a file. Uh, test data CSV. Okay. Let me see here. What's the shape of it? Export CSV preview. Okay, the headings are timeline. Not sure if this is gonna be valid, but we'll see what happens. Start date. And oops, start date and date duration minutes name notes. Okay, so then a row of data would be something like let's do work start date. There would it looks like year month, day, and then the space, then it's got the, let's see, hour duration? No, that's the hour start time. Yeah, so time of day, so it's the, at 7 a.m., uh, 32 minutes, 22 seconds is when I click the start button there. Okay, and then the end date is basically the same. Uh, well, it's exactly the same format. Oop, 17, space, and this is gonna be, well, that was a short one, but that's fine. 07, 50, 17, right. Then the duration in minutes, 9185. I'm just reading this off of a little export preview on the app that I'm using here. And I'm just kind of fabricating the file. I don't want to do the transfer yet. I'll maybe do that later. I want to get the, the, the workflow idea first, if that makes sense. Anyway, anyway, so let's see here. Okay, so I did, that was the end date. The duration is that in minutes, okay? Which is actually, that's probably gonna be one of the most important. There's gonna be the timeline, which is how I categorize it, and the minutes. Those are kinda gonna be the two things that matter. And um, I'm gonna give here the name is basically it's it's like a I use it as a tag so I had writing there and then notes is blank so that's oh how do you do a 
I think. How do you do a blank? Well, let's see what happens when I try to do CSV load data. Let's see if it's valid data, first of all. How about that? Let me see. Let's have a look. Okay, pardon me. Reader, writer. Okay, so I could load it lazy, but uh, we'll. S uh uh huh. Well, let me um, let me just do the simplest possible thing that might work. Let's maybe let's even see if I O reader I don't need it. Let's try um, def a as slurp the file test data.csv so a is this string here and now let's do csv slash read csv and see if it can read a string directly let's see if it actually can do that it can okay so that's pretty straightforward so uh, let's do a count on that which is sensible if I do count first of that I get six which is one two three four five six which makes sense and if I now do count second I also get six okay so it's working uh, I was just double checking that this here, this at the end, did result in a correct blank in that CSV. So it seems to anyway. So if I now def a again, just to re-import re it basically. Let's do this. It's still six. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So, um, I'm going to go to the washroom for a minute and then I'll be right back. Drink too much water. <laughs> Okay. Oh, hey, uh, Spinner ZL, um, if you're still there, thanks for that follow. Um, sorry if I missed it, uh, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Feel free to uh, talk in the chat if you want, ask questions, talk about projects you're working on, that sort of thing. You know, whatever. <laughs> sorry, I don't have any like uh, fancy animations on my screen yet. That's something I've been meaning to do and just uh, haven't yet. Partly because um, I don't have a massive, massive viewer count yet, so I felt that maybe that's something to add, I don't know, a 
once popularity grows a bit, but I'm rambling. Rambling, rambling, rambling. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to add one more entry to this. I'm going to add Let's see here. Yeah, let's do another work entry just 17. And let's go from let's let's I'm going to kind of I am making this one up. I did not track This one's going to be, I'm just going to fake it at exactly uh, one hour. Let's say that. 8.40 and zero seconds magically. Oof. 8.40, zero seconds. And then the end date is 2020-08.17. And I made it, let's say, an hour and 15 minutes. So it'll be... 9, 09, 55, there, and 00, zero for simplicity, which means the duration in minutes was 60 plus 15 is exactly 75.1234 is, I think, how it's formatted. And uh, let, let's imagine that it was. Well, I was working on um, stylo work. The notes don't always matter, but okay, let's see now if I redef A for a moment here. Uh, wait, I want to do, and let's def B as CSV slash read CSV of A. And B has three entries the headers, the and then the two data lines there. Uh, okay, so that is probably okay for the time being. Um, well, let's let's go like this. Um, a good way to do this I think it would be really good to have this data so right now this is just a this is modeled as a lazy list of or a lazy sequence I should say I think it's a lazy sequence right Lazy. Oops. Anyway, whatever. It's a sequence, probably a lazy sequence, I'm pretty sure. Um, What I want to do is make a little function that will turn the it, that'll turn this into a map or into a list of maps, right? So right now it's a list of vectors of data. So it's basic. Pardon me. So it's really simple. But what I would prefer is, um, you know, a map where. So if I pull just one entry, it'll be a map where it says timeline. Geez, timeline, and then it'll have the string here, the value of it, and then, nope. Oh, right, well, anyway. Basically, I want all the keys to be the headings here. 
Can you do a, let me see here, def a as, can you make a key, let's say duration dash minutes. Yeah, no, you can't have the, you have to escape. Let's see, what happens if I do um, to array keyword turns symbols, it should turn symbols into keywords, right? Yes, okay, so if I do keyword, the symbol uh, duration with these parens in it, does that work? I don't think it'll work, yeah, okay. So what I need to do there, I do need to, hmm, well, actually, let me see what happens when I do keyword on duration minutes like this. What will it do? Oh, interesting. I kind of, hmm, what I, what I should do is just have a duration or something like that. Um, count. into yeah okay right so that's gonna choke a little bit so I'm gonna have to probably pre I'm gonna have to massage the the headings a little bit but that's fine that's the way it goes right so if I um, let's see Let's see, define, what's that called? Um, sanitizing? I think it's called sanitizing. Sanitize string. Yeah, let's see, closure, sanitize string. Is that a possible thing? Uh, Let's see here. Let's see if there's something useful. String replace, just kind of HTML stuff. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, one thing. So CSV. While I'm still thinking about it for a minute, let me um, do uh, console command and put a little uh, blurb here. A um, the con the console command of interest is. Um, give at p and then oh i forget it let's see here um sanitize header it's going to take um it's going to take a list Sanitize header headings. Yeah. It's going to do something and then it's going to terminate. So there's that. And then we'll, uh, okay. Tangled code. This here, let's do um, Minecraft give command. Let's see what that is again. I don't totally remember how to use the give command. Okay, so I'm gonna just for prototyping assume, so I have Java edition so I play on my computer and I also have uh, switch edition 
because it's fun to play on my Switch. Um, I'm going to assume that this method will work on both, because I think it will. Um, okay. I have a newer version than all of these, so this is the syntax. Let me just go ahead and slap that in there. Nope, using the wrong, okay. Copy that, paste that from this site. There we go. Um, items I think I'll need uh, in the rewards table. Okay. Let's see here. Data is optional. That's um, not what I need there. Data tag. Gold underscore block. Oh, um, wait a second. Item amount data tag. Am I, did I copy the right thing here? Yeah. Yes, okay. So I don't know what data tag is. Actually, let me uh, then, let me finish. Let's change this like this. Uh, and what's the, um, I think it's tilde, yeah, right, so, uh, targets, can, uh, well, okay, so, Targets or player Let's see here Item name Target selector Data is optional. It identifies the variation of the block. Oh, okay. So that's pretty useful actually uh, Well, let's uh, let's use this is a good enough place to start for now. Uh, yeah, so a beacon that could be pretty useful actually. Spawn eggs of different kinds are probably useful too. Let's see. <laughs> There's a lot of blocks now, wow. Pretty cool. Chain command block. I won't get into command blocks right now. Uh, let's see. Eventually it'd be cool to have like loot chests basically. <laughs> I'm basically making like, I'm gamifying my life into giving me, me loot boxes in games that I like. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, but it's kind of a fun, fun concept, at least I don't know, I think it's kind of neat. Okay.
any item from this list. There we go. Okay, and now let's go targets, target selectors. Um, at S is self, at P nearest can be, well, let's actually do it like this for a minute. Uh, at S self, oops. Um, at P nearest player, at A all players, at E all entities. That seems okay. Nearest player, random player, all players, all entities. Oh, cool. And you can, uh, Let's uh, go here at E type equals uh, let's see. Okay, so there's all kinds of target selectors. This is pretty cool. Limit. Cool. Three nearest players. Cool, okay, so let's see if there's a way I can target a chest nearby. Let's see that. Let's go list of all entities. Let's not be silly here. I have a control F function. Okay, so chest minecart is a function or a, an entity. Well, okay, so clearly I need to actually, should I, um, let me go ahead and launch Minecraft. I can mess around with these commands anyway. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I don't want it full screen. I want I want it in its own 
desktop. There we go. Okay. Uh, Okay, let's uh, not get ahead of ourselves here. Sanitize header with headings. Let's just call it sanitize and take in a single string. How about that? And then I can map that over the header very easily. Ugh, why are you launching in this? Okay, that's fine. I can move you. Okay, now all I need to do this window management stuff in Mac OS is not my favorite, but uh, that's okay. Right, so um, let's make just a, a goulash. Let's go there. Oh yeah, I was messing around in creative. Oy. That was silly. Well, okay, whatever. Right, so let's go um, game mode at p survival okay so that kind of works back to game I'm obviously not that proficient. It's a bit of a, a bit slow in the game, but that's fine. All right, so all I'm, I don't need to actually play the game right now. I'm just okay. So that's not it. Um, summon wonder if it's like a, if there's like a place hmm Set block um, chest. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's try that again. Set block five fifty six twenty one chest. So that's kind of, let's do one more, set block, chest. Okay, can't do that. Um, so let's make a little note here, uh, console commands. We've also got, um, set block, uh, X, Y, Z, and then block like that. You could do summon, what was it? Summon Minecraft 
Oh, I didn't end up reading it, of course. Minecraft chest underscore minecart. Okay. Chest underscore minecart. Right, so um, keep exploring to find more. Right. Keep exploring to find more. Um, it would be nice to be able to spawn in a chest containing the reward items, but for today, just slash give the items to the player. How about that? That seems reasonable. Uh, and then, so here, defin build console command. Um, command and that'll do something in a minute but so that's what we got to do next for the sake of my CPU here I wonder if I should close this quit quit perfect close this ah, I'll leave it open it's fine okay so let's go ahead and close those up and let's get back to the CSV because that's definitely a good idea. Okay, so sanitize is gonna be I'm looking for if there's an existing function of any kind that can be useful here or if I have to do string replace stuff. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back to this because I didn't read it thoroughly enough. Okay, so given text, you do string as string as string text. Okay, so that's probably Oh, closure contrib string escape. That's kind of cool. Um, sanitize isn't the right word then. Um, ah, it's fine for now. I'm just going to do my own manual little thing here, um, but I'm going to have to do in here require closure.string as s yeah that's good text okay so um, given a string the sanitize function that I'm writing is very messy it does uh, it's gonna do thread first text and it's just going to do s slash replace right so if I def a as um, text with spaces because I've got some of these here have spaces and I don't really want that so I'm going to do text with spaces a is text with spaces so what I can do is s slash replace Oh, I have to, of course, actually load the string library in. And now I do s slash replace. Um, it takes the string as an argument first, then the match is a regex. If I want to replace that with, and then the replacement is the dash character. That's perfect. Should I... Um, Trim. 
Okay, so if I trim this has spaces at front and back. Okay, I do need to do trim first. S slash trim, which takes just the string itself. So thread first text into that is perfect. So now if I do replace spaces with dash characters, we're good there. Um, then I also want to, then it, it does also mean that, okay, so there, those are good. Um, the only other thing I have to do right now is this s slash replace. Um, opening paren, I think that's how I have to do that. And I'm going to replace it with nothing. And then closed paren, same thing. And actually, I kind of wonder if I should do it before. It doesn't. It, it doesn't technically matter, but it might. So if I sanitize the string duration minutes, that's really the one I need to check the most. There we go. Uh, that looks pretty good. So now, if I do. If I do um, def a as slurp, let's reload that file, test data.csv. So a there, if I do first a, this, no. Oh, I have to do, um, of course, let's uh, redef a, not as the string itself, but as the CSV slash read CSV of that. So now A is the data format we want. So if I do uh, map sanitize onto first of A, we now have all of the headings nicely sanitized. Then I can map keyword onto that. Right, and now we have all the keys for everything there. And then all I have to do technically is uh, zip map. Um, if I do keys are this whole thing. And then vowels is let's take second from a just as an example. There we go. That is the data format I like for um, or at least I, I like I think it can be useful. If I turn all of the CSV rows into these maps, that way any the order doesn't really matter anymore. Although, well, I'll get maybe it does, but I don't. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, let's turn what I've just done in the REPL there into some functions in here, just to get that caught up. So. Um, What's the right approach here? Let's do, let's make a function here, defin CSV to maps. We'll call it that. And then we take in a CSV, uh, we'll take in, we'll call it CSV. It's, we know uh, that it's just gonna be a list of lists basically. So if we let, uh, headers, oh no, 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 let's just do keys. Let's let keys equal map keyword onto um, oh, let's, let's actually do this, let's make it kind of cool. Let's do thread first. We want to thread first, first of CSV. So that's a list of the headers and we want to thread it through sanitize Wait a minute, is that gonna work? How should I do this? Let me think about it. What would be, 
Well, actually, no, let, let me... Um, um, what's the... Shoot, what is that? Uh, oh, combine isn't the right... Well, let, hmm. Okay, defin, uh, heading to key. Let's, let's do that. Uh, it's just gonna be text. I'm not sure if this is like the best way to plan it out, but we'll we'll go with it. So we're gonna thread text through the following, right? We sanitize it. Then all we need to do is uh, we actually just sanitize it and then do keyword, right? Does that does that work? If we do heading to key, and the heading is. Uh, Start date. Yeah, good. Oh, let's also, I forgot one other thing. Because just in case, if I do S, there, uh, S slash lowercase, yeah. Yeah, let's add that lowercase into the sanitize here. We do s slash lowercase. There we go. Okay. Then keys is just the map of headings to keys. Yeah, that's all we do then. Map heading to key. I could type that would be nice heading to key map that function heading the key over first of CSV that's the keys value uh, and then vals is just rest of CSV very simple and then all we do is zip map keys vals no that's wrong that's not right uh, rows then we have to do four row in rows basically so um, what's the right approach I want to I don't want to do a four I want to do a map so we're gonna map the function uh, partial um, zip map keys Right, so that means basically, hey, you're gonna run zip map with the same keys every time over the rows, and that should work. So text is just, you sanitize it, then you turn it into a keyword. Really, I could do, um, I could put this in one function. Um, because all I'm doing there is, like the only difference is I'm running the text through sanitizing keyword here. That's it, that's the only difference. Um, so actually let's, I will do that because uh, that's a little more concise, kind of a rough argument. That's, should be fine. Okay, let's see that it works. And I'm gonna rename the function
text to safe keyword. Sure, that seems reasonable as a name. So then keys is just map text to safe keyword. And then this should work. So is A, yes. So if I do uh, CSV to maps of A, I now have a list that's count one less than the count of A because I consume the header into the keys and then I just have the list of rows basically. So that's all I've got there. I do wonder if I should add a little ID or like a sequence value. Um, like a row number. Is there a sort by? <laughs> there is sort by key function and the collection. Okay, I have to I actually don't know how sort by works. So this is an opportunity for me to learn something. So what I want to do here is actually append to hmm. Now I have to think about how I would add a, a an integer count to the to each row. Right, because for keys I can just append basically I can um, conj ID or uh, conj row number. And then rows, I would, I could, well, so let's see if this works. Uh, let's do, um, mm, it's not, this will only work for small CSV files, right? Because what I'm going to need to do, so this rest CSV is all the rows, but that is a lazy sequence. So if I want to, I would have to, if I want to be able to have the ID, I could, no, I can do this without that. I could do, um, Yeah, let's let's try to come up with this for a minute. Let's so we do zip map, and it takes keys, which um, conj. Uh, I always conj is it the collection first? Yeah, list one two three. If I conj four on there, puts it at the front. Yes. Uh, that's fine. The order of the keys doesn't matter. So if I conj onto that list the uh, key row row number row let's just do row and all I need to do is have an incremental thing then if I zip map keys with so the row is here and what I do on the row is so each row is in fact already in a it's already a vector so if I let's take a if I take second of a and I conj onto second of A, the ID, let's say zero. That's at the end, so that mm, that is bad. This row, this order does matter. So 
So if I make this map V, that now will, that should work now, right? So I am sort of cheating a bit. This map V now makes a list of keys in a vector. And if I conge this onto it, that'll be at the end of the vector. So if I conge, um, right, this will be This, none of this is make this isn't quite making sense. Um, I wonder, let's see here. Closure map counter. I wonder if I do have to do it in a for loop. Um, or let's see, closure. Let's do zip map. Um, Let's just see what zip map examples show, should come up anyway. Let's start there. Oh, here, CSV map, head and lines. Map, zip map, map keyword head, lines. Huh. It's basically what I've just done. <laughs> That's cool. Um, initialize with zero for all values. That's fine. ordered as hmm. wait what the generated map is meant to be unordered and can be noticed only for sizes greater than eight. Oh yeah okay that's fine returns a lazy seek of the first item in each collection. All right, well, here, let me, um, let me back out of this for a second. Let's go back to the partial situation. Okay. Um, do this let's let's at least get the function in there if I do keys um, conj onto map V text into safe keyword first CSV Conj row onto that. And then here we've got rows is rest CSV. Oh, wait a minute. I could, um, yeah, I could do this. I could count rows, right? So if rows is I could do this. I could do um, defin uh, add row number. 
add row numbers onto rows, right? And then here, all I do is let uh, row ends, row numbers is um, range count rows. So if I, uh, let's say, count re uh, rest of A, that should be 2. If I do range 2, I get 0 and 1. Good. So I can do it this way, 0 indexed, basically. So row numbers is the range there. And then all I do is um, map conj, yeah, yeah, conj, one, two, oh wait, no, I don't need to do it, I could just do this, map conj onto rows and row numbers, I think that'll work, so let's go here and find out, let's do add row numbers to the rest of A. Did that work? So we've got this thing with a zero at the end and this thing with a one at the end. Okay, so that looks good. So actually here, I don't need this, I just do this. So I can do here map v conj onto that, conj onto the map v, the row key. And then the rows is just add row numbers to the list of rows and then map partial zip map keys let's try that now so if I do uh, a is the CSV that I'm testing with so if I do CSV into maps of a it looks correct Sweet. Okay, perfect. So row zero, row one, perfect. Okay, so that should be good. Um, I have to check a message for a minute. I'll be back very shortly. I won't be long.
family sending me messages asking for help. <laughs> That's okay. It's not like they need it right now. It's in about a month. So just checking in on that. Sorry about that. That is uh, a diversion, a distraction. Okay. Right. So... What I want to do now is, um, okay, so that is the CSV to maps thing. So that's good. So let's make a little, oop, let's make a new um, section now and call it, what do I call it? Um, data mining that's not no that's silly um call collating let's just leave it at data let's leave it at that then okay so um, there's important things I want to be able to do. I want to do um, define um, um, let's do list timelines. So one thing I don't love, right, is um, when you're just pulling in data, right, from a CSV file, you get the headings as decided by the developer of whatever app produced the data. So if I completely produced it all myself, this timeline keyword might be something different, right? Now, I could easily map the names of headings from the export remap them to my own names but then I need to remember the connection right so um, that's fine it's just that basically the the naming of things kind of bleeds from different categories right so I'm I'm making a thing from my the particular time tracker that I'm using to a command in a game Minecraft Pardon me. So the names are going to bleed from either of those unless I decide to name them differently myself. But I'm not going to worry about that for the sake of the prototype. I'm going to just use the, the names that are obvious, right, that are already there. So that's probably fine. I think it should be okay. Um, so list timelines, what that means is if I pull in a CSV from, let's say, the end of like let's say today I wanted to test this out at the end of my work day right and I've got a few hours of work a few hours of, of downtime all intermingled but I don't necessarily have uh, fitness in there or um, whatever right so I want to I kind of want to see but I want to have the function to have all the possible timelines or all the timelines that exist as entries at all I suppose. Uh, anyway, it, it, it should be simple. So uh, if I do um, um, what should I call generically the the shape of this right it's it's a list of maps with this shape to them hmm entries that's okay for now. Uh, okay, so list timelines. All you have to do in that case 
is um, so map map timeline over entries. Does that work? Let's see if that works. Um, A, let's now def B as CSV to maps of A. Right, so if I run list timelines of B, cool. So that does work, and then I can do into sorted map here, or pardon me, into a set, and that'll reduce to, it'll delete all duplicates basically and mush things. So a set is just gonna be, um, you, like the unique, all the unique things, no duplicates. So if I create a CSV with entries that are not work. My hand is feeling a little weird. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Um, let's actually uh, add a add a f another false entry here. Let's well false. Let's let's do fitness, and it's gonna be from. A, 1040 to 1141. Oh, I messed that up. 2020, 1709. Uh, 1040 to 11:41 which means it's 61 minutes and then we went uh, run it's a run I went on a run I did run go on a run the time is just wrong <laughs> that's all so if I then uh, let's redef a entirely as actually I didn't make this uh, I didn't make a function here yet um, I don't know how to I don't know how to name this. Uh, pull data. Um, path, and it's just gonna be slurp. No, it's gonna be um, it's gonna return the list of maps. So it's gotta be. CSV to maps Let's do it this way for fun. I think this will work path parth path Slurp then that data goes into CSV slash read CSV, right? It does, and then that CSV goes into CSV to maps, and that should be it. Is that gonna work? Let's find out. Pull data. Test data.csv. Hey, it worked. That's cool. All right, so uh, we have this fitness thing in there. So now if I def B as this, okay, so we have B, perfect. Then, oops, doing the wrong buttons here. 
Okay, now we've got B is the data. So now there's also another entry there. So I should be able to list timelines of B. And it should have two, it have work and fitness. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, so now I realize it might be at some other point useful to have an additional an additional function that uh, shapes the data further into what I could have useful, right? So if I do first a B, right, it's this map. For example, timeline here, I could convert into a key. Start and end dates, it might be useful to turn into date objects. Uh, duration in minutes, it might be good to turn it into a float value or double. And name, maybe it's smart to put to a safe keyword. And notes should stay as a string. Probably I don't need notes at all. And then row is just an integer. So, Whew. excuse me. That's a consideration for the future. Might be the very near future, actually, now that I say it. Read, read timeline. That's a better name. Read timeline CSV. Read timeline. That is a better name. Read timeline. Exclamation point because it's doing IO. It slurps in the value. That's definitely better. So if I def A, def A and B will be the same. I use them, I redefine them constantly. I'm not sure if that's smart, but read timeline. And it is test data .csv. Perfect. Okay, so list timelines. Actually, let I should um, refine an entry is an M. So um, one entry first A. So mm, let's map M update update takes the map and then the key and the function that you update it with so if i update timeline with the function text to save keyword let's test that if i refine entry of first a Timeline work, perfect. Okay, so let's keep going with that sort of pattern here. It's simple enough to understand. Update, it's relatively easy to read. I think it makes sense. Start data, and this now, um, closure, string to date object. How do I do that? I don't remember. Converting strings to date, time. No. I thought there was a way to do that. Closure, date and time. Following Java to util date.
Hmm. Well, okay, let me skip those for now because I actually don't know that I need them. Um, for right now, we will skip those. Duration minutes with um, I don't know if this will work. It will not. Um, float. Oh, 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 read string. Yeah. Double. I think. Oh, it is a double. Oh, it's also a float. Okay. Uh, what happens if I read string of a start date? I think, let's do um, read string of start date from first of A, null pointer. Start date of first day. Is that actually? Oh, I did something wrong. First of A. Oh, I typoed start. It should hmm, start data. Should be start date. Yikes, that's not good. Uh, okay, so let me. Okay, so read string of that won't work, but that's fine. But read string of that should be okay. First of A. Uh, this turns into a key. I want to turn into a keyword, which I'm doing here. Skip, skip, duration in minutes. If you read string and it's guaranteed to just be a number like that, it'll automatically turn it into a float for you. Name. Let's do the same thing. Update name with text to save string. Save keyword, I mean. Notes, skip, row, skip. So that should be fine. So if I now refine entry, if I map refine entry over A, now all of these are nice there and I do list timelines of that. These are now keywords, perfect. They don't, I, like they don't strictly speaking need to be keywords, but it's nice to make them keywords because it's a common thing in Clojure, and you can you can put them into maps as keys nicely and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Having this, uh, it doesn't matter. I was thinking about a weird way to, uh, instead of having to inject a row number there, row count, I was thinking if it might make sense to encode automatically every, uh, instead of making it a list of maps, it's a map of maps where the key is Mm, that doesn't really matter. Well, it might matter, but I don't think it does right now.
but okay so let's read timeline function here if I do CSV to maps and then refine entry what I can do here is Well, no, I can do it like this. Rows is now going to be map rest CSV through add row numbers and refine entry. And that should still work. Oh, did I uh, okay, let, there we go. That should still work. So if I go back to def A as that, nope, something's wrong there. Text to save keyword of null. Really, eh? Oh, of course that's not going to work. That's silly. Because at this point, they're just rows. They're not actually maps yet. I'm getting uh, a little too... Uh, trying to optimize a little too much there. So refine entry works on a map. So here, if I have this list of CSV maps, CSV to maps produces that list of maps. Here I can do map. Um, refine entry over that and that should work now oh I didn't there we go no uh, something's wrong doing this incorrectly map this function over everything that's returned there is that gonna work now huh, okay I'm trying trying to be clever and it's not working which is usually a sign that it's not worth being clever okay so now, right, if I map refine entry over A, it works now. Okay. Where's the right place to put that refine entry? I totally thought this would work. This will work, defin refine entries, but this seems unnecessary. But the, I think, let me check that this makes sense. Refine entry of map refine entry over entries. Okay, so then here, Refine entry just becomes refine entries. And read timeline should work. 
Yes. Okay. So I thought, let me see why this won't work. Let's try it like this, function uh, entries, map refine entry over entries. Will that work? No. There, okay, that does work. So let's try clean it up just a bit. Shouldn't this work if I just do this? Map, refine entry over this. messy hmm let's leave it this way M more explicit let's leave it like that and I can you can change it later it is just a prototype after all that's not what I meant to do. Okay, let's just double check this. Read timeline. Def A is read timeline. A works. Perfect. Okay, list timelines works. Now, what I want to do is. Let's do um, define. Total, um, total minutes for entries. All I have to do is total minutes. If I give entries and the key, timeline, then the total minutes, all I have to do is uh, let uh, entries be filter right so if I do filter and the predicate is the predicate is gonna be this function equals if I do um, timeline from the entry is equal to the key that I'm looking up, let's say work. That's the filter. I only have the work filter. So now if I run that over the fitness, there we go, I've got fitness only. Okay, so that works. So entries is just filter uh, equals from the timeline entry. Is there a filter by or something like that? Maybe this can be easier. Filter V, that's not what I need. That's okay. Uh, okay, filter equal timeline from the entry I'm, from the list, entry from the list. If it equals the timeline that I'm 
uh, interested in, then that's it. Okay. So that is the list of entries that I care about. Then total minutes, all it has to be is entries minutes is then you just map um, no you just map duration minutes over entries like that and then you just do reduce plus minutes does that work let's try it total minutes uh, from all of A for the keyword work 92.9185 let's see if that makes sense right if I go over here I've got 75 minutes plus 17 if I do 75 plus 17.9185 uh, we are of course going to get the same answer so it is working now if I run the same with the keyword fitness 61, which is exactly what I had placed here. Cool. That's exciting that that works. Okay, so we have a total minutes uh, function. total all minutes for entries will be basically let timelines be list timelines and then all I do whoops Vals is map partial right map partial total minutes for entries and then you map it over the timelines Then you return zip map timelines vals. And this should, if I'm thinking about it correctly, give me a map for the timelines as the keys and the total minutes from those. So if I do total all minutes of A, it doesn't work. And that's fine because I can work with that. Okay. Wrong number of arguments, zero, pass to list timelines. Okay. Uh, list timelines, I forgot to write entries here. Hey, it works. That is very exciting. I'm very happy with that. Okay, so, boy, oh boy. Now, Let me do um, timeline minutes, let's call it that. So total all, and then we just do all minutes. Timeline mins, all mins. Uh, it's not perfect. get timelines, get timelines. Sure, that's good, map, partial, timeline, 
mins over entries with timelines it's good zip map timelines vows okay that should still all work right so if i do get timelines of a i should see work and fitness good if i do all mins of a it should still work for me okay that is great now let's now create some rewards here okay so let's say um, this will need real world testing to adjust um, rates properly but for prototyping prototyping let's say that one hour of work time uh, will provide a diamond reward um, between 10 and 20 diamonds. Um, that seems, let's do half of that, five and 10. Okay, right, so what I do there, What's, what's the right thing to do now? Okay, so I've got all minutes, right? So if I run all minutes over the CSV, then I get an exact work minutes thing, right? And so, um, eligibility <sighs> entries. Hmm. Let's do um, I, I'll need eventually some kind of like sort of syntax for um, Well, let's just do this. Let's start very very simple diamond reward. Okay given entries uh, No, let's do Yeah, no, that's fine. We No, let's do this. Diamond reward, mins. It takes in the number of minutes, that's it. Okay, and then, so what I do immediately is let, is there a, what's, what's mod, uh, math mod? Do I have modulo? Hmm. Let's see. Closure modulo. What I'm doing here is seeing if it makes sense to go to the nearest hour. Oh, there is a mod. Mod ninety one point blah 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 sixty. Let me see if I actually remember how modulus works. Shows me the remainder, right? If I do 90, 60, three over two, load that, one and a half. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking about this wrong. I was, modulus of num and div, I always forget what mod actually shows me it should it shows me the number of times three divides ten evenly no this is silly it should be pretty easily
Um, Okay, so it's showing me the remainder, basically. Yeah, okay. Um, so they're both fine right now. Uh, what I'm trying to find is, uh, pardon me, right, if I do um, some number mod that minus the original divided by, right, What do you, what is that called? There's a um, greatest common, no, lowest common multiple, I think. This is like easy, I should know this, but I always forget. <laughs> Least common multiple, let's see if, if, if I'm thinking about this correctly. Least common multiple A and B usually denoted by is the smallest positive integer that is divisible by both a and b since division of integers by zero is undefined. So this would be no mm-hmm Hmm. Oh, whatever. Um, I don't know what to call the function, so I'm going to do this for right now. So what I have to do is... Uh, right, so I have some number, right? I want to do let... Remainder be rem of number divided by 60. So what I just do is uh, divide this number n minus remainder and divide it by 60. And that should give me a whole number that's the closest possible that could fit in there. Is that, is that right? Let's see here. ASDF of 90 should give me just one, yes. But if I do 120, I should get two. And 120, uh, let's do 140 is still two. All the way up to 170 is still two. 180 should be three. Yeah, so that's working. What's the... What's the, um, wait a second, shouldn't I just, can't I just do math slash floor? If I math floor 182, 182 um, divided by 60, I get three, yeah. So this is silly. Um, What do you call that? 
This is, I'm being, I, I can't remember what the math term for that is, where I just get the whole number value of a division without fractions. What's that called? Ah. Doesn't matter. I will be right back. Uh, Okay, let's do this. Um, let's call it uh, rolls. Um, rolls is just going to be mass slash floor divide minutes by 60. Right, so an hour in this case. So if I were to, right, if I did this by, like, let's say I rewarded it half an hour, right, I get six. Uh, and I do. Um, Int. Let's int that. Yeah. Int math floor that whole thing. Oop. That should work. Okay. Right. So. Rolls is that. Then the. Reward is whoop, Let me see about this. How does rand int work? Rand int. It takes just an n. Okay, so randint it basically gives a, pulls a random integer from the range uh, zero to n minus one. So reward can be um into vector range 10 to 21 no it was 5 to 10 right so 5 to 11 okay so let's call that let me see that that makes sense let's try it into vector range 5 to 11 should give me 5 6 7 8 9 10 yes now I do get from this, right? The key is rand int uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is six values. So random integer between zero and seven, not it, not inclusive, right? Will get me a random reward every time.
Okay, there's a boundary error there, boundary issue. Can I get zero from one, two, three, get zero? Yeah. Why is there a boundary issue there? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm confused about the nil that I got there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Right, if I get three from there, nil. Yeah. Okay, so if I do rend in six. Okay. That seems fine. So that's the range. And then here I have um, let's see here four roll range rolls. So if I have two rolls, range two, right? Yes. Four roll and range rolls. Wait a minute, can't I just do this as a loop bindings expressions? Uh, I'll do, keep it as a four for now. Do do times is it? Do times. I forget like the simple way to do this. So uh, closure do times. These are all parts of closure that I need a little more practice with. So it's good to. Uh... Well, I could do times yeah yeah if I do do times range 2 oops I, that's wrong this has to be like this Right, I want to do rand int six. Nope, that's not correct. Huh, why is that? Oh, maybe it's, wait a minute. Well, if I do times Two. Huh, that's not it. Okay, that's fine if I do do. Do seek. Well, let's just leave it with the four and we'll see if this makes sense. Let's, let's just go with that. I thought do times, maybe I'm just misunderstanding do times a little bit, but I thought it might have made sense here, but that's okay. So. For roll in range rolls, right? Um, I don't. I'm not using it, so let's try rand int. Get. 
get from reward rand int uh, 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 um. Does that make sense? Let's see here. Diamond reward ninety two. Okay. That's pretty cool. Seems to be working. seems good for right now. So if I do Right, so um define well, okay, so let's let's call that the reward, and then um, I don't have much time left, so I'm trying to see, let me get this working into a situation where uh, I can, I wanna output a command, build console command. So let me now uh, delete this, because it's not what I need. Um, Command Let's just run Command. Yeah, let's just do that. Um and let's assume it takes no arguments and it's just gonna run this list of things for me, right? So actually let me do um uh give command string helper function here and it's going to take uh, give is target item amount That seems good. That's a good starting point now. So what you do, right, is then string. All you do is string together. No, you apply string to interpose spaces between this list of things that is the string give to the target, the item in the quantity amount. And that's good enough for now. So if I run this give command string, um, and I give it the arguments, the target is gonna be at self. The item is gonna be diamond. And the amount is going to be two. Give at s diamond two. Okay, that looks like it works. Unless diamond is uh, diamonds, I don't remember. Proto command. Okay. So what this is going to do is, actually it is going to take, let's just call it proto reward. Okay, and it's going to take entries. Um, so what I'm going to do is, 
given that list of entries, what you have to do is um, right let totals be all mins right is that the funk is that the name yeah perfect totals is all mins of entries Uh, rewardable is just going to be work from totals like that for now. So rewardable then is just, um, oh, and then you do roll. Rolls is just diamond reward of rewardable. See this this definitely needs work, but as a prototype it should be okay. So that's the rolls, right? You can get zero, you can get nil to any number of rolls. And then what you do is what happens if I uh, reduce plus on an empty list zero. Oh, perfect. I think that makes sense. Okay, so if I do um, give command string, right, I can do the targets just at s, at self always. I'm currently only doing diamond rewards, and the quantity then is going to be reduce rolls, like that. Yeah. Okay, so if I proto reward A. Cool. Okay, so we're getting a random sampling of rewards here, which seems pretty nice. Let me now uh, just just for kicks here. I guess it doesn't, I can actually just duplicate this a few times for testing. And then if I now proto reward get timelines, right? No, that's wrong. Um, What did I name this? I changed the name and I forgot to read timeline is what it should be. Oop. That did I forget to do that or read timeline. There we go. Uh test data.csv. Cool. Okay. I kind of wonder if I should um, hmm, also do something like this where I do um, this reduction here if I give it um, some kind of if I do something weird like this like a honesty modifier um, taking a number and what I do is um, I do random integer if I do divided by 
no, I need to do n, well, let uh, modifier be Oops, rand. Yes. So modifier. So this honesty modifier is like, look, sometimes you don't work that hard. So you get a random thing between, it, it modifies your score down anywhere from 50% down or it like it can, it multiplies your timer by some fractional value, which is never less than 0.5, but never greater than one either. So how do I do that? I can do randint 50. Fifty plus fifty guarantees that it's always uh, at least point five and then divide the whole thing by one hundred to get the fraction. That makes sense. Let's see here, modifier. Honest modifier, the number doesn't matter. Yep, that seems to be good enough. Should be, um, let's do 4060 though, just, uh, no, 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 uh, let's be harsh. Let's do 5050, that seems good. Oh man, it's raining pretty hard where I'm at right now. Huh, that's fun. Okay, um, so that's the, we've got to call it an honesty modifier. Right, so the new number is going to be int of math slash floor of divide, no, multiply your number times the modifier. Okay, so if I have honesty modifier of say 62, really? What did I do here? And hmm, well, let's zip this and modifier. What? I'm using the wrong function. Crazy. There we go. Okay. That seems uh, kind of good, I guess. If I do honesty modifier, it's arguably not a s sensible name for it, but let's now finish this off by Okay, so let's proto reward the test data. Okay, so I got 51 diamond as the uh, quote unquote reward for this. So I'm gonna, I am gonna go ahead and uh, just test this off, test this out in Minecraft for a minute. So I'm gonna launch that world and just try the command in the command thing. 
Let's play this. Why not? So the obvious idea here is, so I'm, I'm going to do it in some test world, right, where it doesn't matter. But the idea is I want to build a, a, a world where I'm in survival and, and all the regular restrictions apply, except for I get this reward thing to tie my real world actions to the game. Seems fun. Let's just make sure if I copy paste this, I wonder if paste works in the... Uh, chat. Oops. Hey, it does work. There we go. That's my reward. My cashed in reward for this. I forgot to Yeah, see that? That's a nice big swing, which I think is actually a really good thing. Let me, though, go here and change this range from only 2 to 7. No, 2 to 6. Let's bring it way down. Okay. Okay, that works. Um, I wonder, is there a... Um Let's see if there's a way to remove items. Let me see, maybe let's take. Nope, doesn't seem to be. Clear, let's try that. Let's see, clear at self diamond. Oh, wow. Uh, let's now try incorrect. Let's, let's do no items were found. Well, let's give 20. So I have 20 now. Clear. At s diamond ten. Oh, you can take. Okay, that's pretty cool. So uh, you can have negative rewards as well for um, things in your timeline that uh, don't that aren't good. So I could. It might make more sense. Let's quit this. Let's close this. Man, it is raining nice out there. It's a good thing I went on my run early. So, um, ooh, I let's see if I can. Um, Create a, let's see here. Is there a good way to quickly do um, CLI where I run main and it does uh, proto reward? Uh, ooh, I need one arg. Let's see here. Closure command line args. How does that work again? 
How does it work? Does that work? Command line arcs like that? Let me see. Print line, command line, args. Save this. Oop, this is going to break things. Let's get rid of this entirely. Okay, there it's tangled, which means source core CLJC exists. So if I go clj dash m oh i should defin dash main taking no arguments all i want it to do is print line the command line arguments save that clj uh, clj dash m main is going to be diamond caret dot core is this going to run Error. Okay. Oh right. I did the I made the mistake here. This folder name has to be an underscore, not a dash. Shoot, that's a bit of a goof on my part there. Okay, so I have to go through all of these different sections and fix that for a minute. I do always forget that. Some minor frustration on my end. I wish it, I wish it, it didn't do it that way. I mean, it, like, really, it's not a big deal, but it's just kind of a. I don't I don't like underscores anymore. Um, that data can stay the way it is. Okay, diamond caret dot core goes there. Okay, if I save this, if I now go list cd source list remove diamond dash carrot okay now if i make a change here force it to tangle again let me double check list okay good okay so now if i run this clj it should detect the file Okay, we're good. So now, uh, arg it should print. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. And args. See how that goes. Ah, okay. So that, um, okay. Let me not print that. Let me just print args. Is that going to do the same thing? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to just wire up a tiny little thing here. It just is going to run proto reward on first of args. So if I save that, so this has no checking at all, right? So I have to run this knowing. Uh, that the argument I want is test data oops dot CSV and that should print for me the command that goes oh it's wrong let's see null 
Let's try, um, maybe it has to have the dot slash. Still wrong. Okay, that's fine. I can work with that. Maybe I, oop. Maybe I have to put it as a string. Not quite. Oh, right. Um, proto reward, it has to, I'm being silly. It has to run, um, I have to do read, read timeline, yeah, of first args. That will, that should work. If I do test.csv dot slash test, gotta use the right name, test data. Yeah, okay. It does work. All right, now let me do it with this. Interesting. I have to print line this, I guess, eh? Print. Let's try it now. Sweet. That's, uh, I like that. So if I go here to the main here and I do print um, type the following command into uh, the Minecraft console. Remember that cheating this system um, only undermines the value of using it for uh, simple rewards. You only cheat yourself and then I wonder if I need to explicitly do new lines I'm not sure let's find out okay this looks kind of weird Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and get rid of those. Um, if I change this to print line, does that change how it appears? I think it might. Save that. I don't want it to have the quotes around it, if I can avoid it. There we go. Okay, print line is better. Cool. big swings in how I've got this math sorted out. Okay, I this is cool. I think this could work as a fun little project. I kind of like it. Okay, so um, I've got a working prototype in the sense that it it's achieving, it reads the CSV in and you run it once on the console and it gives you out the reward string that you can put into the console, into your game's uh, commands and then and then and thus receive the award, reward. Uh, so it's, it's, the idea is working. So, uh, oops, let me just, um, 
prototype notes. Um, this seems like it could work nicely. Considerations. Java edition should let me modify um, the game directly, allowing me to apply the reward in terminal and have no manual command entry at all. Here, um, in other editions, I could perhaps add a command block. I don't know how those work yet, but it's worth checking out. Okay, other things, um, build an abstraction over how to over um, reward setting. Um, user controls range and statistical Ooh, wait a minute user controls range or um, yeah a user um, can specify range or list of values um, Honesty modifier with heuristic intelligence. Reduce modifiers uh, extreme reduction over time. Um, what else? Oh yeah, um, build reward tables matching um, valuable matching hmm, relative reward values to uh, relative real world effort for actions so by that I mean example um, potentially get a villager spawn egg uh, for five hours of deep work slash hard studying. Uh, build allow the user to cash in time in a few ways. Example um, something like cash in 30 minute work chunks for iron rewards, cash in one hour work chunks for small diamond amount rewards, cash in two hours for greater diamond reward, etc. Um, yeah, that makes sense, I think. Okay, I am, I'm very, oop, let's not uh, kill that. Okay. Oh, I need to write one more little thing here. Um, uh, the command currently gives directly into inventory. I want it to spawn a chest with the reward inside it in front, front of the player or next to their spawn or something like that. Also, um, build up combined award rewards. 
Um, example, um, gunpowder, no, um, fireworks plus elytra is more valuable than either one on their own. Yeah. Okay, um, that was actually a lot of fun for me to build out a full little prototype like that. I have a thing that actually works enough that I could prove out the concept using my uh, using my timeline output from today. Uh, ooh, right. Um, for myself, I want to maybe tie it in with iOS uh, remote uh, iOS, what's it called? Oh yeah, shortcuts. I can execute a remote SSH script from my phone and pass it in data directly. I could create a shortcut that caches in for the day automatically. Yeah, okay, that's enough notes, that's enough work. I should uh, get going, have a few chores to run before I go do a workout. Um, Mondays are a nice uh, kind of ramp up day for me. Sometimes I get a lot of good hard work done, sometimes it's a bit more casual. I mean, today was kind of a bit of both. I managed to get a nice prototype for an idea that was in my head. Uh, and I actually, I think I might want to keep working on this tonight. I'll have to see. Tomorrow I will be back to library work. But in general, um, if you're watching this now, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate that. Um, if you're watching um, sometime in the future, so this won't be live or anything like that. Thanks for that as well. I really appreciate it. Please feel free to um, not go any further than that. If you don't, if you don't want to, you know, share this around or, or comment or, or or anything like that or participate in chat, that's totally understandable and completely fine. But if you're compelled in any way to help me out, um, following me is nice. Uh, talking in the chat if you're able to live is really nice as well for uh, subscribing to the YouTube VODs thing and in general sharing my Twitch and YouTube stuff to anyone who might find it interesting is absolutely helpful I don't need I, I you know if you don't want to like I'm not forcing anyone to do it I, I need to spread things out a little bit spread the word around if you will and uh, if it goes genuinely from people who are interested that's a really cool way to do it um yeah so if you're if if you've stuck around to hear me talk about that thanks and uh, feel free to help feel free not to too that's okay uh but at the end of the day i hope everyone has a good one and i will be back tomorrow as i am back regularly and i'll be working on my cat library so thanks so much have a good one stay well i'll be on my way